Okay, part D. We're asked to sketch the graph of y equals p of x and be sure to include all of these things. So for the y-intercept, as always, I set the x equal to 0. The y then is the function at 0. And I go back up to my formula, and here's my function for p of x. If I plug in 0, all these x terms wipe out, and I just get negative 6. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 6. Now I look for the end behavior. Remember, the end behavior matches the leading term. So in this case, the end behavior is going to resemble the end behavior of y equals 3x to the fifth. Because we have an odd degree, it looks like an S-shape. So it's either going to look like this or look like this. Since I have a positive leading coefficient, it's going to look like that. So that means on our graph, it's going to enter in quadrant 2 and leave us in quadrant 1. So the ends match the ends of this guy. Now as far as the x-intercepts are concerned, that was the whole point of finding the zeros. So we know that x equal 2 is a 0 of multiplicity 1. So we're going to have an x-intercept of 2, 0. And since the multiplicity was 1, uh, it's going to cross here. The other 0 was at negative 1, so we have an x-intercept of negative 1, 0. And since the multiplicity there was 2, it's even, it's going to touch. So now I'm going to put all this information together and hopefully make a nice, pleasing graph. Okay, so there's negative 1, there's 2, put that there, put that there, and we go down 6, so put that there. I know I've got to come in this way, got to touch him, go through there, and cross through there, and end up here. And so we're going to do that in a nice, smooth continuous fashion. So it's going to come up and touch. It's going to head down, cross through, and then head up like that. Uh, where is this relative minimum? We don't know. We would need calculus or the calculator or we need to plot more points to find that out. But based on our information, that's a pretty decent graph. That'll do it for number one. All right, number two, we're asked to solve this inequality. It's a nonlinear inequality. So we start by getting everything on one side and zero on the other. So we'll subtract off the x squared and 4x from both sides. We'll get that. And so as usual, we're going to call this side my function f of x. And we want to make a sine diagram. So to make the sine diagram, I first need to find the zeros. I know that the graph, or I know that f of x is a polynomial function, so I know its graph is continuous. So the only way this is going to change from positive to negative is going to be if I have a zero in between. So how do I find the zeros of such an animal? Well, that's what we spent all the time in Chapter 3 doing. So I can go through the rational zeros theorem, and I can pick plus or minus factors of 3 divided by 2. Keeping in mind, I only need to find one zero to knock this from a cubic down to a quadratic. So you can go through some trial and error. Eventually, at some point, you'll try 1. So 
So bring down the 2, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. You got yourself a winner. So what we've done is taken this f of x and factored it down into x minus 1 times 2x squared plus x minus 3. So we're setting that equal to 0. Now does this break down nicely? Well, we can try. We can put a uh, plus 3 here and a minus 1 there. So that gives me 3x minus 2x. Uh, so that works as well. So my f of x then equal to 0 is equivalent to x minus 1 squared times 2x plus 3 equals 0. And out of this I get x equals 1 and x equals negative 3 halves. So it's time to put these on the number line. Negative 3 halves, 1. And I know that the function at those points is 0 at both those points. And now I check things around it. Say at negative 2, 0, and 2. And once again, I can find the sine of these function values by plugging them into either the original formula for f of x or this factored formula for f of x, whichever is easier. So if I plug in the negative 2, no matter what happens in here, it's going to be squared. So I'm going to get a positive out of that term, or factor rather, and I plug negative 2 in here, I'm going to get a negative out of that factor, so a positive times a negative is a negative. When I plug in 0, I can conveniently plug 0 in here, and that's going to give me a positive. I can plug in 2, I can plug it into this one. This is going to give me a positive factor again. That's also a positive factor. So that's going to give me a plus out of there as well. And now another way we could get the sine diagram is to just graph this quickly. We know the end behavior. We know the zeros and the multiplicities, so we could put together a graph pretty quick that way too. It doesn't matter how you, how you do it. At the end of the day, what am I looking for with this function? I'm looking for where this function is greater than or equal to zero. That means I'm looking for where it's zero or where it's positive. So where it's positive is between negative three halves and one and from one to infinity and where it's zero is at negative three halves and at one. So I get from my final answer negative 3 halves off to infinity. Now something you can do in the privacy of your own home is on your graphing calculator make a graph of this function and this function and you'll see that this function is above this function on the intervals negative 3 halves to 1 and from 1 to infinity and these two functions intersect at x equals negative 3 halves and x equals 1. So that's how you can verify this graphically on your calculator. That'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 3.3. .3.